Is everybody at least a little bit familiar with pneumatic thermostats? There's a one-pipe thermostat and there's a two-pipe thermostat. Is that right? One-pipe device and two-pipe device. If we took a two-pipe thermostat and put it in this room and we wanted to cool today, if we had a chilled water line right here and put our little valve in it and we're going to turn the fan on, whenever the lights come on, we'll just turn the fan on for some cooling. Now, we want to cool based on the, on the room temperature. We'd set our little set point here. We'd have something like 15 PSI coming into this guy. He'd have his little orifice and the little flapper in there and the thing we're not going to get into how the, how the pneumatic thermostat works. We're going to have some kind of actuator over here with some kind of spring range. We'll choose the spring range based on whether it's normally open or normally closed. We don't really care what it is for this application. There's our thermostat, and here's our branch line that comes over, does its deal. Now, we have powered the thermostat and gotten some analog signal, which in this case may be a, you know, a three to six PSI branch line over to the valve, very similar to what we do with the UDC controller. You power it with 120 volts. That gets you to light up the front, and it runs all the logic. Same in the, control, in the recorder. Powers all the motor and all the stuff, lets you run the logic, and then you've got your analog signal that comes out to your final control device. So it's very similar to that. Now another way we could do this, if we had a receiver controller, well we'd have an output that goes to that valve, we'd have 15 PSI coming into it, and somehow over here we'd want a little temperature sensor that's in the space and it would run over. The temperature sensor that's in the space would be a one pipe device. It would only have one tube coming to it and it would have a little bimetal flap on there and a spring so that as the temperature got higher it would, it would bend one way or the other and we'd know, we'd know from the spec sheet what it's doing. But the point is we'd only have that one pipe that goes to it it would be powered from here. 15 PSI comes into the receiver controller and you'd push, push air over here and draw a conclusion in here with a spring a little mechanism of what the temperature is in the room based on what that's bleeding off. Transmitters kind of work the same way. There are two wire transmitters and there are four wire devices. A two wire transmitter is what you're going to see most of the time. Any of those pressure transmitters that we have back there on the back row are two wire devices. They have to be powered. They'll give you four to 20, but only if you power them. A couple ways to do that. You asked about the UDC giving its own power. Many times you'll do a UDC, a power supply, and then your little transmitter, and you just wire these guys in, in a loop. It's always going to be a loop and it's got to be powered. So that's one way to do it. The other is to do, to do the, the special wiring with the auxiliary output and you program the thing to power itself. But the point is this guy over here, this pressure transmitter, temperature transmitter, humidity transmitter, does not self-power. It has to be powered by the device. When we do pH kind of stuff, there's a split. Some of the pH stuff is two wire, some of it's four wire. Naturally, you would assume that the four wire stuff is nicer. For one thing, you can read the display because you've powered it with 120 volts. You can get a real active display that you might be able to read. Any questions about that? Call it older rather than higher end. Foxborough made a ton of four wire transmitters. It was, just a, it was just a decision they made, and others have done it, but you could do a pressure transmitter that's powered with 120 volts and drives uh, 4 to 20 over to the, to the control. So what is power in the loop and what is power external in the loop? That's correct. That is correct. You're going to have a 4 to 20 loop, but if you had that old style Foxborough You'd have no power supply in this loop. You'd just have your recorder and then you, or your uh, 
and then you'd have your 120 volts that go in over here to drive your 24, 28 knob, whatever it is, on the 4 to 20. If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy to use online ordering platform, same day shipping, and a factory trained team of controls experts to answer your questions. Strong Pussy Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.